This encounter happened in the summer of 2011. I was on a cross-country road trip with my mother and brother. We had just crossed the border into Michigan from Wisconsin. It was about 11 p.m. We were running behind schedule and decided to stop at a rest area about two miles before we reached the town of Salt St. Marie, Michigan. We pulled into the rest area and parked in the corner away from the other cars. It was an extremely hot night and we all went for a walk. We walked down a path through the woods and onto a small wooden bridge that crossed a creek. We stopped to look at the water. Then, we turned around and walked back to the parking lot. We walked up to the parking lot and I quickly realized that I had forgotten to grab my brother's cigarettes. I told my mom that I was going to go run down to the bridge and grab them, since he accidentally forgot them and lost them. So, she and my brother walked around to the front of the car, and I walked back to the bridge. I grabbed the cigarettes, then I walked back towards the car, because we were getting ready to leave. About halfway between me getting the car and the rest area, I noticed something running across the road, about 50 feet away from me. It was big, and it was running fast. I was in the middle of the parking lot, and I stop, and I look at this thing. It stopped in the middle of the road, turned to look at me. I stopped walking and stood there. I was facing a creature, about 7 feet tall, covered in long shaggy hair. Its front legs were longer than its hind legs, and it stood kind of hunched over. Its face looked like a dog's face with long pointy ears. Its head was very long and thin, and it had a very long snout. The mouth was open, and I could see that it had long, sharp teeth. Its eyes emitted this dull yellow glow, and they seemed transfixed on me. I was frozen in place. It didn't move for a few seconds. Then, it took off running across the parking lot, towards some buildings in the woods. When it ran, it moved down to all fours, and it ran very fast. I saw it run off the edge of the parking lot. I never moved. I stood there for a few moments, trying to comprehend what I had just seen. I walked back to the car, and my mother was standing by the driver's side door, and she asked why it took so long. I told her that I had forgotten my brother's cigarettes. She looked at me a little weird and asked if I was okay. I had told her the first time before I had even left to go to the bridge, but I assumed she didn't hear me. And I told her I was fine. We got in the car and left the rest area. When we drove through town the next morning, we stopped at a coffee shop and we were talking about the local legend of the dog man that's supposedly all over Michigan. Well, my mom tells me that she had apparently seen one before. She said when she was younger, she was driving down the road with my brother, and they were laughing about urban legends and myths. She looks over at the road and saw a tall, hunched figure walking in the middle. It was walking on all fours, and it was covered in a thick brown fur, she said. She claims it wasn't a bear, and it was not a person in a costume. She tells me that it looked like a huge dog. I didn't believe her at first, but, I mean, I guess it made sense. I never heard of the dogman until now, and I guess I just didn't comprehend it. I mean, yeah, with everything going on, the sighting was really creepy to me, though. And at the time, I didn't quite fully understand it. Looking back, it's been years since then. I still think about it a lot. I have a lot of questions I don't know about. And I don't know if it was the same creature as my sighting or not, what my mom saw. I saw something that night, but I don't quite know what it was. I know it was not a bear, and it was not a man. I've seen a lot of animals in my life, but I've never seen anything like this. And I have never really told anybody about my story, at least until now. I'll reiterate this again. I can't stand here and say for certain it was a dogman. All I know is what I saw, and I've never seen it before. I'm posting this because I can't find anything else like it, and I'm hoping somebody else has seen something similar. The date was November 14th, 
2012. I was driving home from a party. It was about 2.30 a.m. The moon was bright, and the stars were out. I was lost in thought, thinking about the next day, which was a big day for me. Currently, I was in a suburb of Toronto, and approaching city limits. I had just passed a sign for a junior college that I wanted to attend in the fall. I was planning on going to the school to get information on the program, but I had never gotten around to it. I was hoping the school was still open late, at least the visitor center, so I could stop by and get more information. I know, I understand that's kind of a weird route, but whatever. I was driving on the road that ran through a residential area, and all the houses around me were very dark, including mine. The streetlights were on, but no one was outside. The area, though, was very eerily peaceful. Suddenly, I heard a loud thump coming from behind me, but it was just a single loud thump. It sounded like something hit the back of my car. I thought maybe an animal had jumped out. I checked my rearview mirror, but I didn't see anything. I kept driving. I thought it might have been a dog that had maybe jumped out in front of my car, but whatever, I don't know. I hear the sound again, and this time, it was a loud banging on the back of my car, and it was accompanied by what sounded like snarling and growling. So I look in my rearview mirror, still nothing. I continue driving, and I come to a stop sign at the end of the road. I stopped, and suddenly, I felt weight jump onto the trunk of my car. So for the third time, I look in my rearview mirror, and I see a dog, a huge dog. I didn't know exactly what it was. I shouted, and this dog, or what I thought was a dog, jumps onto the back of my car and appeared to be holding onto my vehicle with two human-like hands. Well, they reminded me more of like raccoon hands. It was using its hands and arms to hold onto the back of my vehicle. I could see the arms and hands gripping tightly and pushing down on the trunk of my car. I slam on the gas and sped down the street. I was terrified. I didn't know what this thing was. I just knew that it was big. The arms were covered in thick hair and the hands had these long claws at the end. This animal, or whatever it was, holding on for dear life here, and I'm swerving trying to get this thing to let go. I keep looking back in my rearview mirror into the face of this thing and it's ugly. Really scary looking, honestly. I got to the end of the street and the thing let go. So I slammed on the brakes. I had no idea what was going on, but I did not want that thing getting in my car. It let go, bolts off, and jumps out, letting a terrible screaming noise. I could hear it running off into the distance, into the darkness of the night, and I did not see exactly where it went. I heard it jumping over stuff, causing a ruckus. The next day, I ended up telling my girlfriend about the encounter, but she said she didn't believe me. She said it was probably a large dog or who knows. Last I checked though, dogs don't do what this thing did. I was driving through a wooded area in the night and I saw a dog-like thing walking on the side of the road. I slowed the car down and tried to get a look at it. It was a black dog standing on its hind legs and it looked really weird. I thought it was a bear at first, but it was way too big and too strangely shaped to be a dog or a bear. Then, it stands up on its hind legs and casually walks off into the trees. I looked at it more closely, and it was definitely some type of canid creature. I had my phone in my hand, so I tried recording it. I was shaking like a leaf, so I couldn't really get the best footage. I tried following it into the forest, and it turned around and looked at me. I was freaking out by this point, and I lost it. The last thing I saw was it running away into the forest, and all I could think of was this thing jumping out of the trees at me, like it was going to charge at me. I was so scared. I had never seen a dog like this before, and I pray to God I never see one again. 
I try to do some internet research about it. I guess it's a thing called the Ozark Howler. I guess they're pretty common creatures here down in the south. But I never imagined in my life I would see one like this. I should also add that when I say I followed it, I didn't actually get out of my car. I pulled over on the side of the road to see if I could shine my light, to see where and if it was, to try and get its position. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Although, I felt a lot more curiosity and shock at the mere sight of this thing, rather than fear and dread. This was truly an experience I don't plan on forgetting. For the first time, I'm going to be telling the story of my own personal encounter with a creature known as the Michigan Dogman. It took place back in the summer of 2015 in the small community of St. Louis, Michigan. I was living with a close friend at the time, and I decided to go out to the local gas station at night to look for UFOs. And my friend, we will call him Jack, was not interested in going. He was far too busy watching TV and drinking beer, so I decided to go out anyway. After about an hour or so of sitting in my car out in the middle of nowhere, hoping I would see some forms of life in the sky, I gave up. I decided it was time to go home. I was a bit freaked out though for some reason. It was just this feeling I can't explain. I started the car and began driving home. I was on a long, lonely dirt road that connects with a bigger one. That's what you get for taking night roads, huh? Suddenly, I noticed something running across the road in front of me. I slowed down a bit, and my headlights illuminated something. I was scared at first, but then I realized what it was. It was a dog, or what appeared to be sticking out of the trees. Then, as I saw it more clearly, that's when I began to tense up. What I was looking at wasn't just a dog. This thing had the head of a dog, but it looked more like a cross between a wolf and a German Shepherd. It had a body similar to a dog, but was very lean and slender. And the scariest part of all, it was walking like a human, bipedally. I slam on the brakes, and then I notice that this thing was not alone. And there was about six or seven of them, all coming out of the trees. It was then that I noticed that they were all larger than the first one I saw. Much larger. That means the one I saw was probably a juvenile. These things were massive and built huge. They all had a mixture of long slender legs and long snouts, and all had these glowy orange-yellow-red eyes. Mixes of smoky gray to brown and black. These were huge animals. I was terrified by the sight. I didn't know what to do. They all just stood there staring at me for a few seconds, like a deer in the headlights, unsure as how to handle a person like me seeing that they exist. It was as if I had interrupted them doing something, or while they were on a mission to go somewhere and do something. So I slowly put the car in reverse, but now they're on the road, and I kind of just kept reversing and kept reversing. The last I saw of them was them looking back at me as they decided to, at the last minute, run off into the woods. I was pretty scared. I didn't want to go home, so I went to a neighboring town to get a bite to eat. I was shaking and freaked out by this. I didn't tell anybody in my friend's family. Then I decided to go back to the same spot the next night. I wanted to prove myself this was just a fluke. I was hoping to see something again, but... I was also scared. I was thinking that maybe I was crazy. But it happened again. I saw the same thing again. This time, I only saw the one. Like it was waiting for me. I quickly drove off and that was enough. I was convinced that there was some sort of creature there that was not normal. I was pretty sure that they were not dogs. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I was terrified. The next day, I decided to ask a good friend of mine, not the one I lived with, but this one is a police officer, about what I had seen. I didn't tell him everything, just the basics. I asked him, is it possible that it could have been a coyote? And he tells me it was highly unlikely, 
I mean, I would have seen many others. He tells me that he believes what I saw is called a wolf dog, but not a werewolf. The thought that something or someone could change into a half-man, half-wolf hybrid was too outlandish. I hadn't even told him about the part of it walking on two legs. I just explained that it was some large dog. I didn't think he'd believe me if I was honest. I would later learn that these creatures are called dogmen, and are all over the country, apparently. Then, I would go on to have several other encounters. I have had a few other encounters with dogmen since this first happened, so I know this thing is real. It was not my imagination. It wasn't a coyote and it was not a regular wolf. I've seen it again and again. In fact, two times in broad daylight. And I've had other people see it with me. I have had other people see it by themselves and talk about their sightings with me. I'm convinced this is a real creature. Some type of canine-like creature. Very strange. It is the stuff of legends, to be honest. I know what the creature wants me to see it, because it has shown itself to me several times. It's as if it is now waiting for me now. I've had other people see it, like I said, and they too are terrified. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It has been seen by other people in our community, in town. Maybe there's more of them than just this one pack. There is a huge pack that I know of running around and scaring the daylights out of people. It's weird, you know, because... Like, once you see it and it knows it, you become marked, dare I say, and we all start seeing this thing far more often than you'd ever like to. You don't ever just have one dogman encounter. It just starts there. Anyway, this is my story of what happened that night that I first saw it. I know that it's real, and so many others are seeing it, like you document constantly. I've had a lot of experiences with this creature, and sometimes it makes me wonder, what does it want from me? I'm still trying to figure that out, to be honest. I was driving home from work one night, and I was about an hour away in total from home. I was driving on a two-lane highway, and it was about 10.30 at night. I'm doing about 55 miles an hour, and I was the only car on the road. Now, I was about a mile from my exit when I see something cross into the road. Thinking it was a deer, I slow down, and as I get closer, I realized it was not a deer. It was something else entirely. I've never seen an animal like this. It was standing in the middle of the road, and it was facing my direction. I slow down to about 35 miles an hour, and now I'm roughly 100 or so yards away from it. I was looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is that? I was not sure what it was. It was strange looking. I stopped my car, rolled down my car window, about halfway down. I reach over to my glove compartment and grab my handgun. I had never been in a situation where I would need to use it, and I doubt I would even try to shoot at it. I mean, it was far too large. I could not get a good shot at it anyway. I grabbed my handgun and I pointed it at it. The thing turned its head about 45 degrees, looked at me, and looked at my handgun. It began to growl very loudly, so I point it directly at its face, my hand shaking and I'm nervous to pull a shot off. I was very afraid of whatever this was, and so I put my car slowly in reverse and go back maybe 20 yards. It was still standing there, standing its ground, so I grab my phone and I call 911. I tell them there's this strange animal standing in the middle of the road, and I have my gun pointed at it. Now, during this, it was still growling, and I wanted to come and check it out. I gave them my location. The dispatcher did not believe me. I was afraid it was going to try and get in my car. I looked at this thing, and it turned its eyes to me, and it was a really deep red color. I realized this thing was not human in any way. Then... This thing kind of let out a huff, turned and leapt quickly off into the woodline. I nervously put my gun back and, and I hightailed it out of there that night. The next morning, I started to think to myself, that could not have happened. So, I drive back to that intersection, or that part of road, 
but I could never see anything beyond the road that would give me any glimpse of it ever being there. I was hoping to find footprints or something, but nothing. I even pulled over and parked my car. I walked about half a mile up and down the road, and there was nothing. No hair, no traces of ever making me think that I wasn't insane. Nothing unusual. No strange tracks, no evidence. Nothing. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I just dreamt it. I don't know. But since when does that sort of thing happen? I'm still at a loss. I was driving home one evening in October of 2019. My ex-wife Sally and her new husband Derek and myself were in my car. I was driving a Chevy 2000, if I remember right, and I was about seven miles out from a local hospital. That's the only geolocation I can remember. And I see this, what I thought was a dog, walking along the side of the road. At first, he seems to be kind of minding his own business. and being a jerk, I guess I thought I'd try and scare him by speeding up to get him to kind of get out of the road. Not that he was in the road, but he was kind of weaving out. I was gaining on him pretty fast, and the animal reacted to my approach by jumping into the center of the road. But I didn't slow down. I figured I had a car and this was just a dog. When I startled this, though, he fixed on me and as the human antagonist and I saw that this was no dog, but a creature that looked more wolfish than like a dog. So, all in one moment, I'm glancing at this animal as I have to swerve slowly to the opposite side of the road to avoid hitting what I thought was a dog but is actually not, and my eyes are supposed to be on the center line. But I remember seeing some sort of pattern on this animal, and I'm thinking, is this a bear? What is this? When, unbelievably, this creature, very comfortably, mind you, stands up on its hind legs with its front paws and tries to reach out to the driver's side door, looking at me, with a snarl expression on its face. Just sit with me here for a moment. Visualize a seven-foot-tall, upright canine werewolf in the front of a Chevy Malibu. I passed by him while he was there, and I cranked the wheel to swerve and swerve the car over to the side of the road. We came to a stop on the right-hand side. This thing was now less than 40 feet away from us, and slowly approaching our car. The animal sort of awkwardly walked. While it seemed to comfortably get up on two legs, it was weird. I can't describe it well. And it's as if he was kind of hobbling over to us. Very odd. And sort of swinging back and forth his arms, using them for balance like a human. This thing gave us a pissed off expression then turned and quickly headed into the woods to our left. I'd say east, but it's been over a year, and I don't exactly remember how that road is laid out. We watched him until he kind of got a little deeper off into the woods. We were all pretty spooked by this sighting, so we turn the car around and get back on the road. As we're pulling away, this same creature shoots out of the woods coming towards our car like a fired missile. My ex-wife and her husband start screaming, so I pedal to the metal, and this thing is now darting into the woods next to us, staying parallel to the vehicle the entire time, but in the woods, while I am trying to drive like a madman and get us away from this thing. I remember at one point, I looked over and see this thing running right by our vehicle, and now I'm starting to panic. This thing bolts out and jumps directly over our car into the adjacent woods on the other side, and I nearly swerve and hit an oncoming vehicle. I drive a little ways further until this thing seems like it's not chasing us anymore. But I'm here to tell you that it's some pretty real freaky stuff. Imagine the terror they felt in Jurassic Park when the T-Rex was chasing them in the car. Obviously that's a movie, but that's kind of what it felt like. Talk about a nightmare. I don't know what the hell chased us that night, but it sure as hell sent all of us on a freak out. I've been a truck driver for years and years, but I can never forget the one night that I had a very horrifying experience while being out on the road. Let me just tell you my experience. I was out driving this road at around 2 a.m. I was on my way to the nearest town to deliver a load of produce. I was driving down the road on a straightaway, 
when I see a pair of red eyes glowing in the dark beside the road. I thought it was an animal at first, and I slowed down the truck to see what it was. It turned out to be a dog man. I looked back at him as he was walking on all fours towards me. He had long hair and was covered in a dark brownish red fur. Listen, I know what it was. I listen to a lot of cryptid radio shows and I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to stuff like cryptids and Bigfoot and Dogman. I just instinctively know that this is what I saw. Plus, it looked like a flippin' werewolf. Anyway, I just drove as fast as I could away from the creature. I was scared to death. I can't believe that I saw what I did. I never even told anybody about the encounter until now. I don't know why I never told anybody before, but it's just too scary to think about. I'm pretty scared of dogmen to this day. Even though for the longest time, I'd hoped they didn't exist. I hoped they were just some sort of fictional entertainment. Now, I know they're real. I just hope I never see one again. Oh, and I've tried to join some groups on Facebook where you can tell about your personal encounter story, but I've decided against it. I really don't want to face ridicule from people about what I saw and decided it was best to keep it to myself. Even hardcore Bigfoot enthusiasts will be quick to denounce any dogman encounter. I even wonder if you'll take me seriously. Thanks for reading anyway. One night, while on my back porch having a smoke after a long day of stress and work, I see these pair of red eyes just sitting high up in the tree line, looking right over in my direction. They were set back in a dark outline, not really having a face or form, but I knew they were staring right at me. I immediately freeze and just looked back at them. There was a huge pair of eyes and they were bigger than normal human eyes, and they were very dark in color. The eyes were set higher up in the silhouette of a head, and it was a little lower than the top of a human head. I kept staring at it, and it just stared back at me. I was in disbelief and shock. I could not figure out what this was, and I could see its head move a little. Its eyes would kind of move back and forth, but it never turned away or left. It was watching me the entire time, and I was watching it. I don't even know how long this went on for. It could have been seconds, but it felt like minutes or even hours. You know how time will drag. Then, as it starts to move a bit, I can see the shape is actually not that of a human, but really a large dog that's on two legs standing up. I was frozen in fear and disbelief. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock, trying to figure out what this was. And so I'm thinking to myself, what on earth is this thing? I was being very conscientious of my surroundings, and I was on high alert. I could not move. I was frozen on my back porch. As it stood there, I could see it turn its head to the right to look towards the back side of my house where I had a rather large shed. It was looking around the side of the shed, and as I'm watching it, I hear this cry come from the direction it's looking. It sounds like a muffled cry, but my only guess is that it possibly whatever animal this was had a youngling over by my shed and possibly saw me as a threat as soon as i heard this cry it takes off running straight up to the trees and into the tree line then i hear it emerge out of the trees on the other side and goes to the side of the shed where i heard this crying like noise to begin with it then runs off into the other tree line opposite of the shed and pretty scared by the whole ordeal I decided to run in my house and stay put. I was far too afraid to deal with whatever that thing was out there in my yard. So I just tried to go to bed, but I could not sleep. I tossed and turned and could not get my mind to focus on anything but what I saw. It was about a good hour later, maybe plus, that I heard something large come up on the back porch, and I heard this loud bang and the door to my back porch was rattling very hard. It startled me. I jump up out of bed and go see what it was. I open the door with a weapon and a light, and it was dark. I could not see anything. I turn the light on, but who or whatever that had come onto my porch was now gone. 
I shut the door, locking it, and I go back to bed. This was some terrifying stuff. Obviously, somebody or something was trying to open the door and get into my house. Is there any coincidence between what I saw that night and what happened? I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, I stayed up the rest of the night. I was too afraid to fall back asleep. I was very alert and awake. So, maybe about 2 or 3 in the morning, and I decided to go back and have a cigarette. I was on my same back porch smoking, when I see the same dark shape again approaching my house. I look over, and it stops, and now it's standing across the yard from me, right almost where I had seen it the first time. I could see that it was clearly looking in my direction. And now, because of the night, the moon was now positioned in the sky differently this time, and gave much more visibility to what I was looking at. I could see this thing was some sort of werewolf-looking creature. I was convinced I was having a psychotic breakup, so I was like, you know what, I'm done. I put my cigarette out, walked inside, and decided I had just deprived my body of too much sleep. It was time for bed. I was too tired to be afraid. I wake up the next morning, go out to my porch, and kind of evaluate things. I look around. There were no signs of anything in the yard, so I decided to go check out the shed to see if anything was around there. I checked around the shed, and there was nothing at all. I went around the side of the shed, towards the back, and I find two dead birds in the ground. They looked like they had been hit by something, like bludgeoned. I kind of look at them more, and there were no signs of what exactly killed them, just that they were possibly killed with a large object, like they were kind of flattened out. They were dead. As I'm looking at them, I start to smell this atrocious rotten odor, and it's not coming from these birds, and I cannot place where the smell is coming from exactly. So I'm starting to look around, and I finally see the source maybe five yards away, closer to the back of the tree line, is this dead doe shredded to pieces. This thing looked like it got into a fight with a meat grinder, and it stunk so bad. This wasn't that long ago, and after doing some looking up online, I think I'm convinced I have a dogman or two living around where I live. Great. I have a very old barn on the far side of my property that my husband and I have not used or touched in years. It needs some desperate repairing on the inside and I haven't gotten around to it or got the time. However, I believe something is making the barn its home. I see this large dark shape moving around the barn near dusk. I could see it from part of my house when I look out my window and see these tall ears perched on top of whatever animal it is. Sometimes I'm certain it will come up to the house because I can hear its loud, heavy breathing, and I see its eyes glowing, red in color. It stands on two legs. I promise you it's not a bear of any kind or any known animal that I've ever seen, and I'm not really sure how to explain what I'm seeing. But you know what looks beneath. I've just got glimpses of it by now, of this thing looking in our windows and walking around out near our house. I'm not really sure what it is. My husband and I have seen this creature from time to time, and we don't see it all the time. My husband is convinced it's a Bigfoot. Me? I'm not so sure. When I was a little girl, I had a Bigfoot encounter of my own by a creek where I used to live. And those wood boogers don't look anything like what this thing looks like. This is much more canid in appearance, if that makes any sense. I'm not trying to suggest werewolf. I don't even want to use that term because it makes it sound fictitious and ridiculous. Anyhow, the other night, I had gotten up to go to the bathroom, and I looked out my bedroom window and I see this thing, maybe a hundred yards or, or so from the house, standing there. It was looking toward the house and it had these enormous ears and these red eyes, the same ones it's always had. So I know it's the same creature. Its arms are hanging exceptionally low to its knees. It then turned and kind of slowly walked off into the woods. Scared me to death that night. Because even though it hasn't tried to harm us, you just never know. I've tried to look online and the only thing I could find is these things called dogmen. 
What's the difference between that and a werewolf? And is this true? I live in a very small rural community here in the southern United States. My family has lived in this part for several generations. I consider it a very safe place to live. I always felt safe growing up here, and it seems like a very safe place to raise children. I have never heard of a single violent crime committed in my own town, and there is a strong sense of community that keeps our tiny town running smoothly. On most nights, I could even leave my doors unlocked and my keys inside my vehicles, and not have to worry about a thing. For the most part, the animals in my town are very well behaved. There are always the occasional loose dogs that chase after cars, but they're harmless. One evening, when I was about 24 years old, my friend and her boyfriend and I decided to go for a drive around town. We were just going to drive around the main streets and then make our way back to home. It was a nice evening, and there were not too many people out and about. About a block from my house, I noticed this strange looking dog coming out of a back alley. Now, right off the bat, the thing that I noticed that stood out immediately was just how large and how black this dog was. I mean, it was unusually dark. It wasn't just that it was a dark colored dog, I mean, this thing looked like it had been dipped in ink. It was so dark that it was hard to make out details, but then its attention was turned towards us. It immediately rears its head at us and bares its teeth. We slow down the car and as we're looking at this, we're trying to make sense of what we're seeing because two and two are just not making four. This thing has way too many sharp teeth in its mouth to be a dog. Plus, it looks awkward, like its front legs were much stronger and longer than its back legs. So I thought, is this a mutant or something? Maybe a mutated dog? I don't know. We were scared, but we were also very curious about what we were looking at. This animal spent maybe another second baring its teeth and then quickly kind of backed away into the shadows of the alley. We were all pretty creeped out by it. The impression I got from whatever kind of dog this was is that it did not want to be seen. We just so happened to be at the right place at the right time and we caught it. It did not like that it had been seen. Still one of the freakier memories I have. And no, I never did find out what it was. That's why I'm emailing you. June 27th, 2017, 2 a.m. Mackinac Island State Park. I used to be what one would use the term workaholic, with little if any free time to myself and my hobbies. I worked in the tech department of a big corporation based on operating out of Ann Harbor. This is where I'd be dedicating myself non-stop to back-breaking hours of sorting through code, beta testing, and other menial tasks for which I'm overqualified, but do nonetheless. I had finally reached a breaking point when I was rushed to a hospital after suddenly collapsing at work. This led me to be given some time off. Deciding that spending some time, or little time I had outdoors, would be the most productive way to counteract the effects of working long hours. I called up my brother and arranged for us to spend some time exploring Mackinac Island State Park. My brother was always the outdoorsy type back when we were growing up. He'd always lavished in an opportunity to explore and enjoy all the perks that nature had to offer. On one of his fine adventures in the great outdoors, he was introduced to this island by some friends of his. I couldn't hear the end of how great it was since. So, feeling that a retreat far away from the hustle and bustle of the big city would be grand for my recovery, I called my brother and asked him to introduce me to scenic wonders that the great outdoors had to offer. As expected, he was elated to hear that we finally had a chance to bond over the features that nature had to offer. And he could finally prove to me that camping and the outdoors were not a boys only activity. He promised to fetch me on the weekend so we could then spend an entire week exploring every nook and cranny of this island. He 
made the drive to my house, arriving at around 2 p.m. to pick me up for the 251-mile journey to Mackinac Island from Ann Harbor. After a couple of pit stops along the drive that afforded us some much-needed bond time and some really delicious homemade pies at a variety of diners along the way, we finally made it to the island right around midnight the same day. After entering the island via the bridge, we then had to abandon our vehicle as there was a ban on the use of cars on this island. This rule stemmed from a law that was passed down back in 1898. It was explained to us by one of the hotel receptionists where we stayed at for the night. We were exhausted from our long journey, but still anxious to explore all the natural wonders that the island had to offer, especially any of its natural wonders rarely ever touched by man. However, these were far and few in between as I would discover the following day, when to my dismay, the island turned out to be more of a resort than a holistic nature getaway. A disappointment I didn't spare saying to my brother, but something I should have seen in advance. To this, he proposed a solution of checking out an unexplored patch of wilderness on the island. He promised that although camping wasn't permitted on the island, he had been introduced to a spot where visitors can secretly have a true outdoor experience. He was shown the spot by a past guide as one of his previous stays here at the inn. He was also intent on proving that outdoor activities were a not male only club, and seeing how a retreat in nature could do me well. I was intent on humoring him. We settled upon a rustic woodland area near the coast. It must have been more than two miles long, with some really large rock formations that helped ensure we did not get lost in all the foliage. We had been on the island for an entire day and a half at that point, and it was dawn on a Tuesday when my brother got us a spot to start a campfire in amongst all the trees. There was evidence we weren't the first to take this course of action, of course, with the cinders of what appeared to be a previous campfire in this area. Some that looked as though they were made in abandon only a few days before we arrived. My brother got to making a campfire himself, and he managed to carry in some snacks with him so he could make s'mores. Everything was going well, and I really did start to feel as though my spirit and physical health were getting a well-deserved boost. Not to mention that I rarely got to spend time with my brother due to my work commitments. So, this time that we were having together was really nice. This was until nighttime began to kick in, around 7 p.m., when the rustling of wind in the background turned into what sounded like someone skulking in the bushes. At first, we thought that it might be someone from the island who had wandered into the forest, or maybe an employee of the island's hotels or stores. But after my brother called out in the direction of the noise, and no response, we assumed it was an animal. We could immediately tell that whatever was lurking in the bushes was very big, and from the trees that were shaking in the background and the sounding of branches cracking as they were being walked over, my brother's calling out only seemed to entice the creature even more, as now the noise grew louder as the creature came closer to our campsite. We could start to make out its features from its silhouette in the dark. What my brother saw and I, coming towards us, made us so scared we could do nothing but react and stare in absolute fear. What we saw staring right at us was this huge, bipedal, dog-like creature that was so tall it stood equal in height to a smaller pine tree just behind it, maybe seven or seven and a half feet tall. It stood on two legs, from what we saw, and remained standing the entire time. Its body, especially its torso, looked similar to that of a man, with a face that resembled a wolf. It had a short snout, and its mouth grimaced at us in a horrifying snarl. As we watched drool, it stopped short of coming completely out of the dark and into the light, shining off the fire, as we looked in absolute terror. 
It was almost as if we were in a standoff. Us staring at it, and it staring back at us. My brother mustered just enough courage to reach for a steel tong that we had used to cook the s'mores. And as soon as he did this, this thing took notice, and quickly took off deep into the foliage. Despite its menacing appearance, it seemed more curious and stalkative than anything else. We instinctively knew to immediately leave the campsite and head in a direction opposite of where we saw this creature. We haven't shared yet what we saw with anyone else, fearing they'd think we were on a drug binge or drinking spree in the woods. But we know what we saw, and although we've never talked about it to each other again, we both know that we have each other's back. It's been a few Novembers since this happened, but it's still terrifying all the same. Even typing it out, it still brings back really bad memories, but I feel it's an important story to share and really disproves the notion, growing up, that monsters don't exist. Because simply, what my friend and I saw that night is something straight out of a Stephen King novel. You have to understand that right before this happened, a very close family friend who I've been friends with for a very long time, and still am, her boyfriend of six years cheated on her and then dumped her, not only being emotionally distraught, but she was really needing company and did not want to be alone. Since I was free for the weekend and didn't have any plans, I offered to come stay at her place for the weekend. It would keep her mind occupied and keep her spirits good. I showed up and we had a little bit of a girls' night watching movies, eating popcorn, just doing anything we could to keep her mind off her ex-boyfriend. Because of her, not having the greatest finances in the world, she ended up with this little podunk place, kind of on the outskirts of town. A lot of woods around, but still very pretty on the outside. It wasn't like it was run down or anything, just very small. But it was just her living there, where her ex could and would occasionally visit her when they were together. So, what else more could you need? At about 11 or maybe midnight, my phone was down to about 9 or 10% battery. And I realized, oh crap, I left my charger and clothes in the car. So, I headed out to my car to retrieve all my stuff since I was staying the weekend. And that's right when I saw what looked to be or appeared to be a werewolf. I stepped out on her front porch, clicked the unlock button, and as soon as I was doing this in unison, the front porch light and my car lit up together at the same time, illuminating the entirety of the area, which right before, as I clicked the button, before opening the door was pitch black. As soon as both lights came on, I was screaming, totally startled by what I saw. Standing, maybe not even six feet behind my car, approaching the house was this really tall, I hate to say it, cliche werewolf figure. Instantly, I felt like I was in slow motion, like my brain was scrambling to try and just make sense of what I was taking visually in. I was seeing it right in front of me. The most realistic werewolf costume I had ever seen in my life. But, as it was moving, I could clearly see its defined muscles working under its skin, and the way it was breathing coming towards me. This was something straight out of a movie or a Stephen King novel, which, I would know, I've read a lot of his books growing up. I love him as an author. That's why the first thing I thought of when I saw this, believe it or not, is his book Silver Bullet, which is all about werewolves. I was now screaming, turned around, went back in the house, locking the door. Now, as I'm coming back in the house, fumbling with my keys, trying to lock the door, my friend who's curious, but also now panicked, rushes to the window to see what's wrong. Then, she began screaming as she starts asking me, what is that thing? She now sees it too. 
That's when she closes the blinds and we both run and dive into the kitchen, grabbed the largest knife she had, and sat there, huddled together, crying. Within a minute, we hear this thing walk like a man would on two legs to the very back door where her sliding glass door is. Luckily, that had blinds on it too. It was very aggressively trying to open the door as if this animal knew what handles were. So that means this was either a person in a very convincing costume or this was something else entirely. We were dealing with a real life monster here. It was rattling the door so violently and so hard that maybe after 10 or 15 seconds, it gave up. Paced around the house a couple of more times, pounding on the windows, scratching on the house. Not heavily though, but I believe if it wanted to. This thing possessed the strength to shatter a window. But it was like it was trying to find a weak point into the house. Like it was strategizing and thinking trying to get one in at one point. It kept wiggling the door handle of the front door violently, as if hoping it would release. Luckily, it never did. We went through a period of time where we did not hear it at all, but still far too worried to get it from the kitchen floor. So, we decided to stay put, still crying, still scared, the only sound being the outside and the TV faintly going. About 12 minutes now goes by, and I do remember this because I was looking right at the clock on the oven, which was right next to where we were on the floor, perfectly visible. We heard a couple, very loudly, distinctive pops. It sounded like something being blown up or a large balloon popping. Two of them, actually. And then silence. We heard nothing. Eventually... My friend and I just fell asleep, huddled next to each other, knives still in our hands. I was the first to wake up. I jolted my friend awake, telling her, We made it. It's morning. The light's out. It was now maybe about 7.45, maybe 8 a.m. at this point, and it's almost winter. So the sun is kind of late on rising, especially here up north. My phone was now dead, and... Because I had an Android, she had an iPhone. I had no choice but to go and grab my charger from the car. I was going to figure something out that, and just thinking I cannot let my friend stay here. She didn't have a car at the time, and she mainly got rides back and forth. As I went out to my car, I realized something horrifying. Even though the sun was up, and I was now no longer afraid to go into the darkness... The two back tires of my Prius were completely flat. I walked over to check them out. It looked as if somebody had slashed them, but upon looking closer, I realized that something large had actually bit into them, popping them with its teeth. There were these huge puncture holes in both the back tires. I mean, these tires weren't just a little flat. They were completely flat. And I had already used my spare and never bothered to replace it about a year or two ago before this. To make a long story short, I ended up calling a tow truck. I had the guy give me his personal opinion on what he thought happened. He told me, Sweetheart, you either have a very aggressive bear that bit these tires, or you ran over some spikes, but something happened here. Anyway, I took my friend with me back to my place where she would stay for two more weeks before returning back to her house only for a couple of days before going to stay with her family for a couple of months, then permanently moving there. She eventually went back to town, but only for a day to collect her belongings, never staying overnight. Whatever happened that night, we don't talk about it. I wish I knew more about what it is that we saw, this wooly, hairy, shaggy, wolf-looking thing, but unfortunately... I'm not a biologist. Thank you for taking the time to read this encounter. I hope, if anything, it's provided at least some entertainment, even if it's been at my expense. Even if it has been at my friend's expense as well. Thank you. March 6th, 2010, 7pm. 
Corvallis, Oregon. I hail from a family of renowned hunters. My siblings and I grew up listening to my father's tales of exotic hunts in Africa. The time our great-grandfather fought off a large grizzly bear with nothing but a hunting knife. So, it's no surprise that I developed a knack for the hunt at a very early age. And I know that a female interested in hunting might seem unusual to some people. In Oregon, it's a lot more common than you might think. Whenever I did go hunting, it'd always be in the company of either my older brother or father who learned the tricks of the trade from his father, who, in turn, learned what he knew about hunting from his father before him, and so on. It wasn't that I couldn't exactly hunt on my own, or that I needed help to do the heavy lifting, but having been on what must have been hundreds of outings by now into the great outdoors, you soon come to learn that animals aren't the only thing to be on the lookout for in the wild. And having company is a good way to be safe of any dangers that may lurk in the woods. I was always going on about hunting in the outdoors to several of my friends. One of them, who was studying forestry at the Oregon State University, they told me specifically about a hunting and forestry trail in this here area, and she told me it was well worth checking out. It was in the Corvallis area, and it belonged to a sustainable logging company. The company was even nice enough to offer free permits to anybody who wanted to hunt and hike on their land. They also gave lectures at the College of Forestry at Oregon State, and this gave my friend access to the permits rather easily. But, most importantly, access on the weekends, which was the quietest time to explore their property, without having to worry about other hunters and hikers getting in your way. Since the permit belonged to my friend, and I always took my older brother with me on my hunts, we all made reservations to explore the lands on the upcoming Saturday in March of 2010. When the day finally came, I could barely contain my excitement, which was only heightened by the fact that we weren't technically permitted to hunt in March. However, if we got caught, my friend claimed to know the perfect spot to catch deer that was far away from any logging activities and free from the prying eyes of any law enforcement. Not knowing her to be someone who'd make something up like that, we took her on her word very seriously and arrived at Starker Forest early in the morning. The sheer size of the land and forest within was truly astonishing. Some areas were dense evergreen forests, while others were reserved for logging. Still, other areas were open spaces with thick stumps in the spots where once mighty trees stood. The majority of the forest was quiet, and the only people we encountered were loggers on the job and park rangers sometimes doing their rounds. Since visitors weren't technically permitted to explore on weekends, my friend's student card served as a very handy tool to stop any suspicion our presence brought up. Also, our bags were big enough to conceal the one Montana X3 rifle that we had successfully managed to hide for hunting deer. Dawn had come and gone with us, heading deeper into the forest, far away from any logging and rangers, and it began to seem as though that we were lost, even though my friend insisted she'd taken the route before. That's when we started to find strange things and started experiencing an overwhelming feeling that something sinister was stalking and watching us at a distance. It started with some brush that looked like it was broken and pushed aside by a very large animal. Definitely not a deer or elk. Then, we found a deer carcass, or what was left of it. Just a head and spine, and were so fresh, you could still see red in the meat. At this point, my brother had the rifle drawn and ready. And just then, our feelings of unease slowly turned into terror as the sound of footsteps became louder and louder and louder from the sounds of whatever was making them was now only 20 feet away from us and closing the distance very fast. 
my brother promptly responded by firing in the direction of the noise, which caused whatever this was to scream out violently and became more erratic with its steps, but not slow down. Now, it began to run in our direction, bipedally, and we can now see this creature that was behind all of this commotion. A huge gaunt figure emerging from the bushes, running straight toward us. Had I not been in the woods with two other people, I would have thought that I was seeing things. Slowly, the creature came into my line of sight, and I was shocked to see that a giant wolf was running on its hind legs, just like a human was. Its head was that of a typical wolf, but its body was more like that of a distorted person, similar to what you see in werewolf movies. It howled in agony, nearly tumbling down as it charged toward us, with its howl almost sounding like the muffled, horrified, distorted screams of a man. While my friend and I paused in fear, my brother quickly reacted, firing off another round from his rifle. This caused this animal, creature, thing, whatever you want to call it, to veer off course and run for cover into the trees, in the thicket opposite of us. Although he missed this time, it did seem to scare it away. I was scared and not really sure what to do, but managed to check the time seeing it, that it was 7 p.m. We instantly all agreed that it would be wise if we now left the area immediately, before this thing decided to come back and try its luck a second time, or worse, bring friends. We were intercepted by two rangers as we made a run for what we hoped was the exit, and although hunting season is a punishable offense, at least in the off-season, after seeing how shaken up we were, we were just escorted to the property gate, with only a warning. It must be karma, you all running into a predator out here. The one ranger remarked. What was it? We all looked at each other for a split second, and I said this. Just a bear. We came across a bear. I knew that none of us would want to open that can of worms by telling them what we really saw out there. Thank you for hearing my encounter. I've been a farmer for almost a decade now. I inherited a small patch of land from my parents that's roughly an hour to an hour and a half drive from St. Louis, Missouri. I hail from one of the first families to settle down in the entirety of the Missouri area, and the land that I decided to call home and establish my roots here. It's been in our family for generations. It was a scenic outcrop of evergreen pastures that went on for miles in every direction. There was a rather large river on one end, not too far from the farmhouse, that provided water to my crops and livestock. And, east of my property, was a deep forest that was so big, it went on to form part of the Mark Twain National Forest. It was this forest, as well as the occasional pest outbreaks, and the drop in price of livestock, that were my biggest headache on the farm. Although the forest wasn't an official border to my farm because, technically, I owned a large part of it, I would soon come to learn that it was best if I treated it as an official border for the east end of my property, and basically never pass that border. I'll get into that here shortly, and you'll understand why. My farm is based in a pretty remote area that is ways off from any human activity. Actually, that was one of its biggest selling points to me, and one of the reasons why nobody else in the family had wanted it. In a way, I think my parents knew I'd appreciate the solitude and off-the-grid lifestyle it would provide me, which is why they chose me to leave it to in the first place. You had to drive through a maze of dirt roads just to make it to the nearest road and I honestly liked it that way. But four years into owning the land, I began to lose the occasional sheep to various wildlife that would venture out of the forest in search of food. This almost always happened at night when I was fast asleep. I never did witness what would kill my sheep directly, but I'd find tracks near the site of the kill 
that gave me a rather good idea of what it was. And with the tracks always being canine-like, I knew the local woods harbored some wolf packs. We even had a bear show up on the property at one point. Although, it didn't cause any harm to the livestock. It seemed to be interested in looking around. I had seen it coming from a distance and was safely watching it from my kitchen window. But, finally, it got bored and left, some two hours later. Since livestock farming was one of the main ways I made it income, the predators that ventured out of the forest onto my farm prompted me to build a secure enclosure for my sheep. And I also got a sheepdog to keep them safe when they were out grazing. After constructing a proper enclosure for my sheep and getting a sheepdog to keep an eye on them, the casualties all but stopped. Not the occasional forest animal didn't come wandering in every now and then, though. Now, I know I just said that the casualties all stopped, but let me just say that that was only until April of 2012. This was around the time my sheepdog, named Jack, began to get really worked up come dawn every day. I would bring him inside with me after we had directed the sheep back into the enclosure around 5 p.m. daily. But for some strange reason, he'd go crazy, barking frantically towards the direction of the sheep's enclosure at nighttime. Having worked with animals even before I ever moved to the farm, I knew that my dog's panic was nothing to take light of. And one Thursday... He was so frantic that he even began hurling himself against the door. Also, the sheep were bleeding so loud I could hear them from inside the house. All of this prompted me to go and investigate what was really happening. So, it was around 10 p.m., and I reached for my shotgun heading towards the sheep's enclosure. Jack runs ahead of me and seemed to stop at a distance, growing ever more frantic. Little did I know, we were both about to encounter the most terrifying night of our lives. As I caught up to, and I came closer, a seven-foot silhouette greeted me. And what I saw was so ghastly and shocking that I froze in my tracks. Jack wasn't doing any better and kept a safe distance from the creature and barked at it like I'd never heard him bark before. The creature's shape resembled something you'd expect to see in a Bram Stoker novel, and had I not been so close to it as I was, I probably would have thought it was a very large bear. It had a face no different from one of the timber wolves that came into the farm, but that was about as far as similarities go. Its body, especially its torso, resembled that of a man. It had long, human-like arms that almost went as far down to its ankles with hominid-like hands that ended in extremely large claws. Its face stared at us in grimace, and I couldn't tell if it was about to lunge at us or if it was making sure we did not come any closer. Just for the record, I had no intention of doing that. Its lower body, though, was more wolf-like, but what stood out the most is its bipedal gait, and the way it stood... It never deviated, not even once during our encounter, which made me realize that it must always use two legs and not four. I couldn't look away from it as it faced off with my dog, who was going absolutely berserk. The creature responded by making a blood-curdling sound that sounded more like a man moaning or crying or screaming. It's hard to say which. More human than any sound that a canine would ever produce. It stood there in a territorial standoff with my dog, neither one moving an inch, until eventually, Jack mustered up enough courage to advance toward it, calling its bluff and sending the creature bolting towards the woods. I couldn't believe he did that. Soon after this creature ran off, I grabbed my phone and I called 911. Jack and I stood frozen in place and didn't even think to withdraw ourselves back to the house. We literally couldn't think. I waited for the cops from the nearest town to arrive. The pain of living rural. They came about an hour after the incident, so around 11 p.m. 
And they confirmed the encounter did happen, but they could not confirm what species of animal did it. They were able to confirm because they found a dead animal just outside the enclosure. And around it was a strange set of tracks. The tracks headed off into the woods exactly where we watched it run. I heard one officer whispering to another that these tracks looked strange since they were too big to be a wolf. And I also heard him say that it appeared that this creature walked off on two legs instead of four. I didn't sleep that night, and I haven't slept well since. Every time my dog barks in the early dawn hours, I think of this horrific encounter. It's definitely a trigger that brings me right back to that day. Unfortunately, it happens way more than I'd like it to, and I'm hoping that one day I'll get past it all. But for now, I'm just doing the best I can. Thanks for listening. I always loved Januarys, ever since I was a small child. It was one of the only times I ever got to spend with my father, who was away from home most of the year. He worked in the oil drilling operations in Alaska's North Slopes, which meant that I only got to see him for very short intervals all throughout the year, except for his yearly time off from mid-December all the way through February. I was extremely close with my father, and despite being a girl, we both shared a passion and love for the outdoors, especially fishing. In fact, most of his time off was spent in search of the ultimate fishing spot. He always looked for one that had an equal balance of sights to look at and fish to catch. During his break in 2009, he found a great fishing spot here in Alaska, which he claimed was as vast, if not bigger, than the town we were from. He said that the river split out into various channels over an area of land that stretched out for hundreds of miles. My mind was racing just thinking of all the different species of fish that such a large stretch of river would even possess. And now, I felt that all of our previous outings and fishing trips would pale in comparison to this one trip, for more reasons than just the fishing. It was also the first time that we would be going to Alaska for one of our fishing trips, and this trip, which was to the Kabuk River, gave us the perfect chance to learn about a new wilderness spot. Even the drive to Alaska was scattered with awe-inspiring scenery. My father took the most scenic routes as he could find any mind wandered as I watched the majestic foothills and beautiful landscapes out the window. We had left our house with enough provisions for a whole week and also brought along our trusted kayak to enhance the fishing experience. Plus, it's always good to be familiar with their boat in order to have the best experience. We plan to follow the route taken by some of the Kobuk's earlier settlers. And the brochures we had with us promised a lot of fishing camps, hunting spots along the way. There was even the chance of finding an object of archaeological importance as we passed through the lesser used paths. The area was very difficult to reach at first, and I'm sure my father must have wished that we had come from a larger fishing party than just me. I was still young and really too small to be of any real assistance. We were saved when, along the way, we made it to the village of Ambler, where my father was able to leave behind our small kayak and rent a good-sized raft that we would use from that point onwards from our journey. A guide had warned us to be wary of the rapids and even gave us a map so we could know where we were approaching them. He also gave us a very stern warning to look out for bears for entering our campsite at night. Even though they were the target of hunts and usually avoided humans, you could never be sure. I also got the feeling he wanted to warn us to be on the lookout for something else, but held himself back at the very last minute. Little did I know then that he would soon get a good idea of what he was thinking of. We saw many sights along the way and came across several other hunting parties on the shore. Setting up their camps, of course. Light aircraft could be seen flying overhead, 
bringing people into the rivers, and we saw other rafting groups with people fishing. We arrived at Ambler on Friday, and had spent a whole three days afloat along the many sub-rivers and tributaries of the Kobuk River, when we spotted on the shoreline an area of open land with no hunting parties or any fishing companies on it. It was now midday, right around 3 p.m. It looked to be the perfect place to start a small fire and cook ourselves some lunch. The journey to this spot had been a tumultuous one, with currents that had taken us a good distance from the shore. But just as my father rode the raft towards the shore to land it, a large caribou came running at a great speed from out of the dense forest, just a couple of feet from the shore. It stops, paused at the foot of the river, just in front of us. But as the trees kind of rattled behind it, it quickly plunged itself into the ice-cold waters and started swimming straight towards our raft. We all look at each other, both thinking that we were watching something incredible and wondering what else was about to happen or come out of the forest. Now, besides the caribou, we were both curious to see what predator or hunter was chasing it and making it so scared as it starts to swim towards us. My father whispered that he was worried that it could either be a bear or maybe a hunter just indiscriminately firing in our direction, that he might be off in the trees. But neither showed up to the shore. Instead, to our horror, this massive wolf-like creature that was on two legs reared its grotesque face from the thick forest. As it entered the open land, it briefly stopped to search its surroundings, and it quickly spotted a caribou in the water. It made a blood-curdling howl that sounded like no animal I had ever heard before, almost having a human-like quality to it. The caribou's eyes were wide with fear, and we worried about where it might be heading, since it continued to head deeper into the water. The wolf creature then quickly ran towards the shore, only pausing as the water brushed up against its strangely shaped legs, howling as if in frustration that it could not reach this caribou, which was clearly its prey because its long teeth hanging from its mouth, eager to bite into this thing. The wolf creature quickly ran towards the shore, only pausing as the water brushed up against it. We pushed ourselves deeper into the body of the river, hoping to catch a current to take us out of the area. We threw a quick glance over at the caribou, and it seemed to be thinking the same thing. The wolf dog creature was now starting to go into the water as well, and with a bit of quick thinking, I threw some of the fish we'd caught in its direction, hoping to catch its attention, maybe distract it. Luckily, this seemed to work. We were finally able to catch a current, and as we drifted away from this wolfman hybrid creature, it stopped its chase when one of the fish swam near it. We stayed drifting in a raft for hours until we came upon a large hunting party on the shores. We must have looked like a wreck as they happily invited us in amongst them. We were visibly shaken from the whole ordeal and explained what had happened. One member told us we had just been privy to the legendary dogman of Alaska, a dog-human hybrid that is supposedly said to roam the areas of this river, the areas most men don't dare go. He claimed it was good fortune to see it, but knowing how close we came to being face-to-face -face with this creature, with this predatory, calculating look in its eyes, we felt anything but lucky. For as long as I can remember, I have been a staunch supporter of the law. I had a strict upbringing and was the type of person who allows for ambiguities, the kind that lay between the good and bad in society. It is probably no surprise to you then that I ended up in law enforcement, or at least an offshoot of it. I and a small team of others were the patrolmen of a local patch of woods that lay on the outskirts of Payson, Arizona. It wasn't my first choice of employment, I'll tell you that much, but it's a job that grew on me. And, to be honest, I can't see myself doing anything else. I know it's a world away from inner-city patrols, but 
if you've been on the job here long enough, you'll come to see things that no patrols in the city can provide you with. Every now and then, we would encounter something more than just your average trespassing teenagers, hanging out in the woods, smoking weed, having sex, or illegal loggers looking to make a quick buck. Sometimes, you'd even stumble across a bear, or mountain lion, or even a scene that you'd only see on the National Geographic. Sometimes, you'd encounter something so extraordinary, there is no real-world reference to match it. This is what happened to me and my colleague during one of our routine assignments into the Tonto National Forest here in Arizona. The weeks leading up to the encounter were eventful, to say the least, with two colleagues of mine finding the site of illegal logging on one of each of their patrols. What was strange about it, though, was that the site had been abandoned before they found it, and before the loggers could complete their activities. Their campsite was still in pristine condition with two tents. Each had sleeping bags inside and provisions still inside of them. Outside lay the remains of a campfire with a fresh pot that assumingly held boiling water until the fire went out. There was even a chainsaw and an axe near at least half a dozen logs. A couple of feet from the campsite were also tire tracks whose skid marks seemed to indicate that the vehicle had left in a hurry. The only thing we figured out that could have caused these loggers to flee and leave everything behind in such a hurry was a predator or group of predators showing up at the campsite unexpectedly. Although, predators in the forest weren't something new. Predators this close to the edge of the forest were concerning, since this is where most of the hiking trails and visitors took place. So, naturally, this put us all on high alert looking out for anything unusual during our patrols. We honestly had no clue what the predators might be, but I had come across large droppings that did not match any of the local predators known to live in the forest. We made sure to pass the loggers' campsite at least once during our patrol rounds to see if they'd try to come back and collect their gear, but we never saw any sign of them. We had four teams of two people to patrol the park all throughout the year, with two teams patrolling that park in a week. But none of my fellow rangers had managed to even catch even a glimpse of these predators. That was until my partner and I went on a patrol. It was April 9th, a day like any other for me and my partner as we did our daily rounds. We had a patrol vehicle that we used in the areas of the forest that we could. But most of our day patrolling was spent on paths inaccessible by vehicles. Besides the occasional litter bug and hiker veering too far off the path, the day was turning out to be just like any other, until we encountered a group of young hikers scared half to death and mumbling on about werewolves or something, over to the east of where they came from. There were three of them, and they all reeked of weed. So we promptly sent them off in the direction and exited and chalked their claims of werewolves down to a wolf sighting exuberated by their choice of recreation. For the first time in weeks, we had hopes of finally catching the predators that had been terrorizing our park's visitors, especially now that we had just heard this account of wolves. As soon as we could identify the predators' location, we would be able to figure out a way to deal with them. So, we headed east, in the direction the hikers had come. It was around 7 p.m., and the night was coming. This coupled with the trees, was making it hard to see anything in the forest, but we always had a flashlight on us. That was standard procedure, so we clicked in on it and used it. My partner held the flashlight and shined it ahead of us on the path, so I walked ahead following its light, when suddenly, in the shadows in front of me, just beyond the reach of the flashlight, I caught a glimpse of a wolf munching something. I guess it was food that the hikers left behind, but in this case, the wolf was three times the size of any wolf I had seen. As soon as the light hit the line of sight, it paused and raised itself up, slowly turning towards them. This is where things get weird as its body was disproportionately positioned for a wolf. Instead, it almost resembled the body of a man. This creature was frantic. You could tell that it didn't think it would be seen. 
and you could see its eyes that it seemed smart. The closer they got, the more territorial it became, growling as though it thought they were able to take its meal or something. It stared at us with piercing, glowing eyes that shine out from a head full of dark fur. Matted fur that definitely showed us this creature had been living out here for a while. While I stood there, frozen and hesitating to go any further, my partner quickly drew her service pistol, firing a shot into the air. The sound was deafening, and you could tell that, whatever this creature was, it was bothered. Disorientating it, making me angry. Then... She fired off a second shot that sent it running away, kind of angrily. We searched the area afterwards for signs of more dog creatures, secretly hoping we wouldn't find anything. But, indeed, we found several other prints. So, we're not really sure. Similar, but smaller ones than belonging to the creature that we saw. However, as for the creatures themselves, we found nothing. When it came time for an official report on the incident, that we filled out all the paperwork exactly as we experienced it, except for one critical point. We left out calling it a dog man for obvious reasons, replacing the words with wolves. We knew that our jobs would have been in jeopardy, and maybe even our sanity questioned. We just felt it best to not shake anything up. Nothing, meaning no creature with this description, was ever seen again by us or the other patrols unless they also saw it, but chose to keep the story to themselves, just like us. However, to date, every now and then, hikers and hunters would venture too deep into the woods, and we'd often hear stories about them rushing out with terror in their eyes, screaming and yelling that they'd seen this creature. Some of them even reported it exactly as it sounded, like a dogman. My now patrol partner and I never told anybody that we actually believed them. We just went through the motions and followed all of our training, telling them that what they had seen was perfectly normal and natural in the woods, and that in their surprise, their minds made it out to be more than it was. We knew they were in their right to be scared, but we still kept our encounter and our secret to ourselves. It was late March 2007 when I saw it. You probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's just that. I've got to share it with somebody. Anybody. I figured maybe if more people knew about it, well, maybe someday, there might be some real answers. That's got to count for something. It might one day even save some lives. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll collect each other's encounters. Anyway, here it goes. I was just a kid when this happened. We were in the middle of soccer practice. It was a late, sunny afternoon, but nothing too blinding. This was back when I was still dreaming of going to Berkeley. One of my teammates kicked the ball really hard. I started forward, but the ball sailed straight over my head, out of the soccer park, and across the street into a cluster of tightly woven trees. It was weird that it would land there because... Most of the land around the park was grassy and open, but I dismissed it and glanced from side to side in case of any incoming traffic. The streets surrounding the park were usually over busy, but I watched as one car, a common sedan in navy blue, passed by me. Everybody was impatient for me to get the ball, but I shrugged it off and crossed the street. I could see the mountains to my right, and as I jogged across the hot pavement, That's when I saw it. My teammates were much too far away to see anything. Right behind the ball, something was moving. Something big. I honestly thought it was a stray dog at first. I mean, anybody would if they'd seen it too. The dark, fluffy head of a rust-colored fur could easily belong to a Malamute, or even a long-haired German Shepherd. It could have even been a cross of the two. I suppose... I watched as the canine's nose wrinkled up and down, taking in each of the scents of the soccer ball. I watched in fascination and terror as it continued to lean closer. Since I like dogs, I stupidly called over to it, thinking it was maybe friendly. The thing, and I say thing because I realized shortly it was not a dog, 
glanced up at me and began to stand on its hind legs. I remember the impossibly long shadow as it fell over me. This thing or dog or whatever you want to call it, it must have easily been twice my size. Whatever its true height was, I was scared, and I'm not exactly the type that scares easily. Yet in that moment, I could feel the blood drain from my skin as this dreaded creature stared me down with its soul-piercing gaze. The yellow eyes were like burning embers of something. Something almost human staring straight through me, like it was judging or not whether to let me go. I couldn't pry myself away, and its, its gaze was absolutely mesmerizing. There was a dangerous sort of intelligence reflecting back from deep within its eyes. Something far older and much more mysterious than its furry predecessors. I stayed where I was for what seemed like a long time. There really wasn't anywhere else I can go, to be honest. I wasn't sure how fast this thing could run, but I was willing to bet that it was a lot faster than me, and I was in good shape. But with legs like that, there was no way I would even stand a chance. His stride had to have been more than likely two or three times wider than mine. I could imagine him closing the gap between us in a mere heartbeat. This creature let out a low, guttural growl. It rumbled out in a curious warning, but didn't sound anything like a dog should have sounded. It was almost like there were two different vocal cords. Whatever it was definitely did not hit like me. That was fine with me. I didn't like it much either, even if it was a him. I couldn't tell because there was a shadow between it. I bravely reached out with my trembling arm and grabbed the ball. Using one of its massive clawed paws with nails that could have easily rivaled that of Confucius in length, if Confucius had ever been a dog-like beast, the creature suddenly swung back in the woods. I quickly grabbed the ball and made a dash for it. As I moved, this thing was making a trembling noise in the woods, smashing around the trees and kind of emitting a low growl. To my great surprise, it seemed to disappear very shortly. I was terrified beyond my wits, and I scanned the horizon for any sign of life. But there was none. My teammates back over were shouting loudly, yet I paid no attention to them. I was astonished at what I'd seen. Eventually, I gave up on the hope that I might one day see this thing again. Whatever it was. Long gone. I hurried and took the soccer ball back to my teammates where... I then shared my story with them. They all thought I was nuts. I kind of thought I had lost it there too for a moment. And I never did see that thing again, though I went back many times to the same field. Maybe it was just passing through. Anyway, after that, I believe anything's possible. Though I think the real question is, what do you think? What animal did I see? Last July, I went camping with some friends. Sam and Evan, I'd actually seen recently. But Elizabeth was coming too, and I hadn't seen her since she moved to Alaska. I was excited to see everybody and just hang out by the tent with some beer and cook some good food on the fire. Sure enough, as soon as we got there and set up tent, cracked open the beer and started playing drinking games. First, we played King's Cup and then never have I ever. You know, the basics. As it got darker, we turned on an old lantern that Evan had brought. We only really had the light of the lantern, the stars, the fire, and the full moon, and occasionally our phones, lighting us up as we laughed and drank and hung out. Then, as the moon began to come out, we began hearing a faint howling noise. Off in the distance, we couldn't make out what it was. Well, I admit, I was definitely a bit scared. Being a city boy who's never seen a wolf in person, I was intrigued enough, or maybe I should say tipsy enough. It was hard to hide my excitement, though, at hearing real nature howls. I thought it would be funny. I tried to howl back, but my friends stopped me. Living in Alaska these past few months, she was much more in tune with the dangers of wildlife in a way I didn't know as a city boy. 
and somebody whose only interactions with nature were through things like National Geographic. Maybe because they were intrigued also. Or maybe, just to mess with Elizabeth, Sam and Evan joined in on the howling too. And soon, I followed suit. Eventually, we began getting sleepy and ran out of ideas for drinking games. So, we decided to crash. Sam and Evan were now staying in one tent, and Elizabeth and I were staying in another. Nothing was happening between us, it's just the way the sleeping arrangement worked out. I gave her privacy while she changed, and I felt the urge to go and use the bathroom. I was going to go use the public bathroom in the middle of the campground. You know, the kind with spider webs the size of your head in every corner, and dirt all over the sink, which makes you wonder if you're even dirtier after washing your hands. It was for that very reason, as well as the beautiful night, that I decided instead to go over by the river. The moonlight reminded me of a painting, and I chuckled to myself, imagining Bob Ross painting happy little trees along the mountain. I unzipped, went about my business, and enjoyed the fresh, cool evening air on my face, cooling me down from that flush of alcohol. I'm about to finish up when I see movement on the other side of the river. I squint my eyes to see a little bit more clearly, thinking it's probably a deer or something, and hoping it was just a moose since I've always wanted to see one but never had the chance. Well, whatever it was, was definitely big enough to be a moose. As the figure comes close to the bank of the river, I noticed it definitely wasn't a moose. For a second, I thought it was a doe or a big dog until I realized it was neither of those. It was a giant wolf, and when I say giant, I mean absolutely monstrous. I was definitely freaking out a little bit, but I think I had enough alcohol in me that the fear was muted and the curiosity was heightened. I stepped closer to the river, trying to get an even better look at the thing. It was occasionally glancing over at me, but it was mainly just standing there. I took one more step closer, and boom! I slipped on a mossy rock, landing right on my butt. I get up and see that this wolf is now staring right at me. I'm not sure if I scared it, or if it was just curious. But then, that's when it happened. The wolf, what I thought was a giant gray wolf, then stood up on its hind legs. My first thought was that maybe it was doing what my cat does when she wants a treat or she's curious, which is to stand up on their hind legs to get a better look. But upon regaining my composure and looking closely at what I thought was a wolf, now fully illuminated by the moonlight, I realized it wasn't just balancing itself on its hind paws. It wasn't just propped up to get a better view. It didn't have paws. It had feet. Feet with large claws coming out of them. And it didn't have front paws either, but what appeared to be raccoon-like human hands. And they also had claws. And it had the face of a giant wolf, and it was now snarling at me. And that's when the scariest thing ever happened in my life. This creature, which... After the extensive googling once I got home that I'm sure was a dogman took a step towards me bipedally on two legs like a man and then another and another and another deliberate well-balanced steps like it was used to walking on two legs normally steps that any animal should not be used to I was terrified frozen with fear every nerve in my body was on fire screaming at me to get out of there Every step this thing took sent me deeper and deeper into this fear-driven paralysis. My heart was now beating so hard it was like thunder, and I'm sweating bullets. I'm sure this thing was going to do God knows what. Eat me, maul me, tear me in pieces. And then luckily, it looked up, kind of looked around, and then looked off to the left, as if it knew something. Looked back at me and disappeared back into the tree line. For a moment, I stay there, nearly hyperventilating, just trying to breathe deeply to stop my heart from collapsing in on itself. And after a few minutes, I got the shakes, but luckily, I was able to regain movement. And I now slowly backed away from the river, got into my tent, where my friend Elizabeth was out. Out cold. Surprisingly, 
I somehow managed to sleep. It was a pretty restless sleep, of course, and I was in such shock that I forgot to change my pants. The next day, I told my friends what I saw, but they all just laughed at me and told me, yeah, dude, you were too drunk. You need to lay down. But I know what I saw. I haven't been hiking since because if creatures like that live out in the mountains, I'd rather stay away. But I've been reading up on dogmen, and everything people talk about rings true with my own experience. I never believed in so-called cryptids before, but ever since I went camping with my friends that day, I'm now a believer. This is my eyewitness account of the Michigan Dogman. In February of 2002, I was visiting my brother in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, in the town of Lorium. My brother's wife and I were sitting in the living room of the house. This is the house they purchased the previous summer. My brother was in the kitchen, and his wife in the bedroom. I was in the living room, on the sofa, talking with my brother's wife. We had a TV in the living room, although the TV was not currently on. It was dark outside, and the only lights on in the house were just a few nightlights in the bedrooms. I remember that it was a couple of hours past midnight. I remember this because I was very tired and falling asleep. I remember the lights being off because when I became aware of what was going on, I kind of came to, and I heard my brother's wife screaming in the bedroom. She had gotten up, and so I jumped off the sofa, ran into the bedroom, quickly turned on the lights and saw that my brother's wife was now lying in bed, in the fetal position, screaming and seemingly in a state of shock. I had asked her what had happened. She told me that she was going to try and go to sleep, but she had heard a sound coming from outside. When she looked out the window, she saw something peering in at her. It was a dog, but not like a dog she had ever seen before. It was a big dog, with heavy black fur and a face that she described as dog-like, but not that of an actual dog. It was more wolf-like, with a big head and a long snout. And she said that it seemed to be staring at her, and that that stare was penetrating. She said it was as if she could feel the stare, as if it was an attack, and that she felt very uneasy. She screamed, and the dog, or whatever it was, ran towards the tree line. My brother's wife was technically not hurt or anything, but she did feel as if something had been there. That is, not a dream. I wasn't able to find any physical evidence, but I did see some blotchy footprints in the snow that could not have been made by a regular dog. They were far too large. This is not the first time that the dogmen had been supposedly seen around this area. Growing up, I had heard other reports of this creature in this area. And believe it or not, Michigan, I guess, is a hotbed for these things. Before, I did not believe in the existence of the dogman, or any other paranormal creature, prior to this incident. I now believe that it existed and it was stalking my brother's wife this evening. The first time I ever heard of a dogman was in the mid-1980s from a fellow student at the University of Wyoming. He told me this story. I was up in the West Mountain Range, west of Loramie, about 20 miles. It was fall and the air was crisp, but I was a rookie at hunting. I had been on the mountain for a few days, and I made a huge mistake. I brought barely enough ammunition. In fact, I was out. It was time to go, so I started down the mountain. Got to where the timber line ended. I stepped out into the clearing and saw this thing. This big black thing. I froze, it froze. It looked like a dog, but it was much larger. I'd say about the size of a grizzly. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to die. Since I didn't have any rifle ammo left, just a knife, 
I didn't have time to reach for it, since I assumed this thing was going to kill me. This animal was going to eat me. I was sure of it. Then, all of a sudden, it just turned and ran off. I don't know if it thought I was dead or what, but it just ran. After it was gone, I just fell down. I had to catch myself before I hit the ground, though. I was shaking something awful, and I was pretty scared. I didn't know what to think, but I was still alive. I never told anybody about this until now. Yeah, see, he seems like a pretty honest young guy, and I have no reason to doubt his sighting. I've had several encounters with the Dogman. Well, we always called him Dogman when I was a little girl, but maybe he's a werewolf. He would show up at my window during nights, terrifying the ever-living holy out of me. But that all ended one day when my father took me to see this girl who lived just a little bit away from me. Look, to this day, I don't know if she was a witch or possessed or what, but she gave me some blessed sage, and that kind of helped my dogman or demon problem. Anyway, as strange as it was, it happened like this. So, I saw him, and he came to visit me a few times. I was in bed one night, and I had heard a noise in my room. I was lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, and I had heard scratching on the outside of my window. So I put my hand under my covers to try and turn on my lamp without being seen. I was able to get it on, sat up, and I heard more scratching. So I got out of bed and walked over to the window. I saw nothing. I went back to bed and lay down. And that's when I heard the scratching reoccur. So I turned around and looked over. Now, before this thing could dart out of view, I see these large black ears, pointed ears, just perking up right outside of the view of my window. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought I was dreaming. I blinked my eyes a few times. I looked again and there he was. I began screaming and ran back into bed to cover my head from this hideous monster outside, not wanting it to see me. A few minutes later went by and I realized he was now gone. But now I was too scared to get out of bed. So I just lay there thinking about what I saw. Thinking about what I should do. I knew I had to do something. I heard my mom finally come to my room. Probably after hearing me scream. I was too scared to move or say anything. She told me to get up and go downstairs. I didn't. I was in shock. She came over and took the covers off me then began to shake me, telling me to get up. So, I got up and she took me downstairs. I made her promise not to tell anyone what I saw. I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy. She told me that she would have to tell my father. I was relieved that she would tell him. I didn't want to be alone. So, I slept downstairs. And the day came and went. And my dad got home from work the next day so my mom told him about what I saw. He didn't believe her at first, but after I told him what happened, now he was angry that I didn't tell him right away, that instead my mother did. Kind of confusing, I know. But he wanted to know why I didn't tell him. I told him I was scared. He told me not to worry about it, that he knew how to take care of it, and that we've dealt with this thing before. It wouldn't be the first time. He told me to go take a shower, and he would be right back. So, I took a shower, and he was back when I got out. He tells me to get dressed. I put on some clothes, and we left the house. So, I asked him where he's going. He told me just to get in the car, and we would talk about it when we got there. I asked him what he was going to do. He told me that he was going to talk to someone about it. I wasn't sure what to think. We were riding in the car, and I didn't say anything. He didn't either. I was glad that he was being quiet. Or maybe I shouldn't have been in hindsight. But it was kind of just a way for me to de-stem, process what was going on. 
So he pulled up to some place and parked in the car. He told me to stay in the car and be quiet. He got out and I waited. I watched him go into this little white house just a few doors down from the street. He went inside and the lady who had lived there let him in. They talked for a few minutes and then my dad comes out and gets in the car. I asked him what he had talked about. He tells me that the lady had a daughter who was supposedly a vampire. At least she believed that and also believed that she had a special sage to ward off evil spirits and demonic beings. I asked him, why on earth are we going to go talk to her? She's crazy. He told me that he thought she could help, although I didn't know what he meant by help. This whole situation was just getting crazier and crazier, and now my dad seemed off his rocker. So... He commanded me to get out of the car and follow him. I got out and followed him to the house. My dad talked to the lady and she let us in. We came to the girl's room that he was talking about. She was just sitting in a chair in the corner of the room. I asked my dad why she was sitting like that and he told me that she was meditating. I asked what that is and he told me that she was trying to reach a higher level of consciousness. I didn't know what he was talking about. I could not think straight. I was too scared to think straight. I felt like I was going to cry. The girl just randomly opens her eyes and looks at me. I was already scared to death of her. I didn't know what to do. She looked at me and spoke in a very monotone voice. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. She claimed that she would protect me. Not to be afraid. I did feel a little better, but still very hesitant. But I did begin to calm down. My dad told me to go sit on the couch, and he sat down next to me. She came out with us and told me that she was going to help me. Told me that she would call upon her ancestors to help her and bless some sage. I didn't know what she meant, but I didn't want to say anything or challenge her. She began to chant in the strange language I didn't understand. She was chanting and chanting for a few minutes. Then... She began to shake. I was scared. I, I didn't know what to do. My dad just assured me everything was okay, and she continued to shake and shake and do this weird ritual with her body. Her eyes rolled in the back of her head. I mean, the whole thing was downright terrifying to witness. She falls over on the floor and begins to convulse. She was shaking and twitching. Then she stops. Now... She stayed still for a while, then sits up immediately and told her that she had talked to her ancestors and told me that I was not to worry. So I told her that I did not believe in that kind of stuff, and I was kind of done. I didn't want to hear this anymore. I told her I was going home. She just looked at me and didn't say anything. After I told her I was going home, she just sat there. I got up and walked out the door. My dad followed me out, and I didn't even say anything to him, but before he walked out, she handed him the special sage. She said nothing. I didn't want to know what she meant by that. So we get back in the car and drive home. Nothing was said. When we get back home, I was going to go to my room and try to forget about the whole thing. I don't know what freaky thing I just witnessed. I mean, I didn't know what else to do. My mom was at the door waiting for me. She asked me what had happened, and I told her straight up I was not going to talk about it anymore. She demanded that I tell her what happened, and I told her I didn't want to tell her. She demanded I talk about it, and I said I didn't want to talk about it. Then, if I don't, she threatened to take me to a psychiatrist, so I just go to my room and lock the door. Maybe an hour later, my dad comes up to the bedroom knocks on the door, I let him in, and he hands me the sage. I didn't say anything. He just told me to place it by the window, and I should be fine. So, I did just that. I felt like I was going to explode. I mean, I didn't know how to process everything. Was I going crazy? I just wanted to forget about this whole thing. The last 24 hours that had transpired were just nuts. First, this creature in my window. 
Next, some satanic girl who convulses on the floor and claims she has a special sage to help and can speak to her ancestors. I did end up putting that sage by the window, and that stopped my dogman encounters. I still don't know if it was real or not. I mean, I still don't believe. I just hope that nobody else ever has to go through this. Please share this story if you think it could help somebody. I was 12 years old and living in a small town in Michigan. It was around 10 p.m. It was dark out, and I was walking from a friend's house. I was walking on a dirt road that ran behind a cornfield. I was going through the woods when I heard something behind me. I turned around and saw a dark figure standing behind a tree. It was looking at me. I was frozen. I couldn't move. I could not breathe. I thought I was dead. I was convinced I was going to be killed. I was staring at a dogman. I couldn't even think. I couldn't figure out what to do. I didn't even know what to do. This thing, after kind of sizing me up and checking me out, just turns around and walks away. I stood there for a few seconds longer. What else do I do? I turned and began walking back toward my house and I was shaking so badly breathing hard and kind of hyperventilating. The next day, I told my family about it, and they didn't buy it. They were convinced I was lying and making it up for attention. That basically caused me to close up and not talk about it again after that. Luckily, I haven't seen this thing since. I don't know if it will ever see me again. What I believe it was doing was scouting, and it found me. It appeared to be on a mission or doing something. Maybe I had caught it in the middle of doing something nefarious. I can't be too sure. Either way, I found your YouTube and felt somewhat comfortable opening up and sharing my encounter with somebody who I feel would take me a little more seriously. I grew up in Bath, Michigan, and have lived here in the Upper Peninsula for the past five years. I was a freshman in high school, and so my girlfriend and I were walking home from a friend's house. It was around 11 p.m., in dark. We were walking on a dirt road, through a wooded area. When we were about halfway home, we heard a strange sound in the woods. We stopped and listened. We heard something growling. It was deep and low-sounding. We didn't know what it was. We were scared. We slowly walked away from the sound. We decided to walk the rest of the way home in the street. So, we walked through the woods until we were out of the woods. And then we walked down some concrete stairs, through some trees, and finally into the street. It was then that we saw it. Only for a few seconds, though. I know for a fact, just being in this area, I've heard of this creature, what people call a dogman. And what we saw that night was exactly that. We saw it standing there looking at us. And we just dropped our stuff and ran, man. We ran until we got to my house. We ran into the house and told my mom what had happened. She didn't believe either of us. She assumed that we were just messing around and were trying to make excuses to why we had been so late. When we told my dad what happened, he was the same. Although we were visibly scared and shaken... There's no way to prove it otherwise. We didn't know what to do. So, we didn't tell anybody about it. I mean, we were both convinced nobody would ever believe us. It was such a scary experience. I'm glad we didn't see it again, though. I always just thought they were a made-up thing or maybe an urban legend around here. But I guess that's honestly not the case. I've been hunting all my life, and I have seen a lot of things out in the woods. I've seen deer, bear, coyotes, bobcats, several cougars. But one night, I'm going to share with you something terrifying that happened to me. I saw something that was not of the earth. I was out with my cousin one night in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. This was back in 2000. 
we were snowmobiling out in the woods and had been drinking and partying a lot that night. We were mostly sober at this time in the morning, though. It was roughly 3 a.m., and we were riding out on an old trail, about 20 miles from the nearest civilization. We weren't too worried about being seen or spotted, because there was nobody in this area around us. We had not seen or heard from anyone in well over two hours. It was really quiet, and all we could hear was the sound of the tracks of the snowmobile. As we're riding, my cousin stops and looks out into the woods on the left side. He points out and said, Do you see that? What is that? I looked in the direction he was pointing, and you could visibly see this dark figure moving through the trees. But at the time, it was too far away to see what it was. I told my cousin that it was probably just a deer. We continued to ride for a little while when my cousin stopped again. He now pointed down the trail and said, No, look again. What is it? So I looked down the trail again, but could not see anything. So I told him that I didn't see what he was talking about now. He gave me the shh sign with his finger to his lips and to listen. I listened and heard something coming through the woods towards us, although it was strange because with the sound, you couldn't see it but you can definitely hear it, and I have never heard anything like it. It sounded like a combination of a low rumble and a high-pitched squeal. I told my cousin that it was just a deer, probably, but he said, No, it's not, with a very concerned look on its face. He was right. As I looked into the woods, I could see something coming towards us. It was a huge black figure, it was walking on two feet, and it was certainly not a deer. As it got closer, I could see that it was an extremely large dog. It was a black dog with reddish-looking eyes. It was easily the biggest, meanest dog I had ever seen. It walked through the woods on two feet like a man does. It was not on all fours. It started walking toward us faster, and so we began backing up. I wanted to turn around and go, but my cousin said, No, we have to be careful, otherwise it will chase us. Just keep backing up. So that is what we did. As we're backing up, this thing is now coming right at us. And we backed up until we got to the end of this short little cutoff on the trail. Once we got to this part, we turned our bikes around and headed back the way we had just come. As we're riding, I look back and see the dog standing at the end of the trail. It just stood there looking at us. When we ride our way back to the main trail, we stopped and got off our snowmobiles. We were kind of afraid to go back the way we had come, so we made the decision to go ahead and ride. So we get back on the snowmobiles and start riding towards town. Just then, I could hear this thing now pursuing us through the trees crashing and making all sorts of sounds. I want you to imagine something for a second. Imagine an adult male moose being chased through the woods. The sound that would make. It running and crushing and breaking stuff. The sound of something big running through the woods. That's the closest I can give you. I know that because, well, I've been chased by an adult male moose before, and that was scary. And this was very similar in sound and how much noise it was making. Such a ruckus. It sounded pissed we were leaving, and it was now chasing us fast. So I was like, come on, we gotta go. But as we were going, this thing lunges and jumps at us near the back of our snowmobile. Now this thing was chasing after us through the woods and out on the trail, the main part of it. I look back and this thing is running full force on two feet. This thing was chasing us and gaining ground on us. I looked back again and saw that it was now only roughly 20 yards behind us. I was really scared and told my cousin to make it go faster. So now we're going about 50 miles an hour through the woods. I look back again and see that it was still running after us. It was still gaining ground on us. And I thought for sure we're going to be goners, torn to pieces by this thing. I was sweating, 
my heart was pounding. I looked back again and saw that it was maybe only about ten yards behind us. I thought this thing was going to jump on my snowmobile and kill us. I was really convinced of that. I mean, I was so terrified at this point that I could not see straight. I was sweating so bad and everything was now turning to a blur. I kept screaming, go faster, and he screamed to shut up. I looked back again, and now it's about five yards behind us, keeping up. I told him I'm about to crap my pants, and he shouts back to me, what do we do? He says, hold on, as we're going, flying through the woods. He pulls out his pistol and yells, this thing is going to kill us, so I'm going to shoot it. And before he could even aim his gun, while trying to multitask between driving his snowmobile and looking back at this thing, in one big leap, this dog monster jumps on the back of my snowmobile, nearly sending me and this thing crashing. But I feel its grip solidify on the thing and hold its hands around my back like it was trying to pull me off. Now I'm going about 40 miles an hour and holding on for dear life. I could not see what my cousin was doing because he slowed down significantly and I heard two or maybe three shots. Bang, bang, bang. I thought he had killed us because I just feel this dog thing let go and fall limp and fall off the back. I thought he had killed it, but it did not stop. He caught up to me and we rode for about three more miles before we actually stopped to see if it was still chasing us. It was not. My cousin and I were both out of breath, and we looked at each other. <laughs> we could not believe what had just happened. The back of my snowmobile was now all scratched up, and my back was a little sore, to say the least. We decided to keep riding. We rode for about another hour until we got back to town. I have never been so scared in all my life. I was shaking a lot and I could not talk. I told my cousin, I never imagined we'd have seen a huge black dog with red eyes. That was the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I asked him, did you kill it? And he told me no. He stunned it. It had fallen off the snowmobile and let go, but it got back up and disappeared. He said he fired his gun, but the dog had fallen off and rolled into the tree line. When looking for it, he did not see where it goes. All we can tell people what we saw is that, well, we really can't, I guess. We try to tell some people, like close friends and family, but they never believe us. Even when I showed them the scratches and bruising, they tell me I'm lying or it was out in the woods or maybe I got attacked by a bear or something. But I'm telling you, this is what happened to me, and I'm scarred from the event. The sighting occurred in the summer of 1978. I was 14 years old and my sister was 17. We were visiting my great uncle and aunt who lived in a mobile home in a wooded area of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Their trailer located at the end of a long dirt road, was located just about a quarter mile away from the nearest paved road, and it was also in a very heavily wooded area. From the bedroom window I slept in, I could see nothing but trees and forest. So, it was late at night, and we had been asleep in our bedroom for a while. My sister and I had shared a bedroom, by the way, because when my sister woke up, she had been having a dream that she had seen this dog-like creature in the woods surrounding our trailer. At least, she thought it was a dream at first. But then, she heard a strange noise coming from outside, and so she wakes me up in a panic. We both go to the living room window to see if we could see what was making the noise. Even though the nearest road to the trailer was a quarter mile away, we could hear the noise from there. It kind of sounded like a dog making noise, but... There was something else in it. The barking was low, almost like a growl. We stood there and listened for a few seconds. We then heard the noise again. This time, the sound was coming from a nearby trailer on the dirt road, same as our trailer. The dog barked, then it growled, then barked again. We could actually hear the dog walking on the gravel as it made its way to our trailer. 
as it approached. We could hear this thing walking on the gravel road and then hear it walking in the tall grass. Whatever it is sounded very large. We could hear it moving closer and closer, walking its way up the dirt driveway, going in and out of the grass, sniffing. We could hear it get onto the deck. Now it was ever so close. Now, my sister was terrified and holding on to me for dear life. I know I was also scared. I wanted to know what this dog looked like. I wanted to see it. I wanted to know why there was a dog there in the first place. So this thing walks up to the front door of the trailer. The door was located in the living room, which was directly behind the window we were looking out of. The dog began to bark, and I could hear it growl. Well, I say bark, but that's the only sound I could think to describe it as. It was kind of like a guttural grunt. It was very loud. It sounded like it was right there, outside the front door. Then, it starts jiggling the door handle violently, as if trying to open it. And then, maybe after five seconds, it immediately lets go, and starts making this strange sound that I would never heard a dog ever make before. We heard it make the noise again, and then it was louder. It was unlike any dog noise I had ever heard before. Then, I hear this thing move to the back side of the trailer, closer to where we were looking out. We heard it walking around, still sniffing, groaning, clicking, and making these weird groaning noises. It was also making that strange guttural sound again. Now, I was hoping it would go away, but it never did. My sister and I were so, so scared. We weren't sure what to do. We just stood there huddled in the living room, listening to this thing pace around our trailer. It walks back up to the front door, begins to groan and growl and make those sounds. Then, it kind of seemed frustrated. We hear it start walking away from the door and then the trailer. It goes quiet for a minute. Then, we could hear it going down the dirt driveway towards the main road. We heard it walk across and onto the gravel. We can only hear it because it sounded so heavy, and it didn't sound like it was trying to be quiet. Then, we hear it kind of going through the woods, limbs and trees snapping and crashing. Not heavily, but you could just hear the sounds of something really big moving through the brush. So, my sister and I used this as an opportunity to go and run and hide back in our bedroom, locking the door and lying down, but of course we never slept. We were far too scared. When we told our aunt and uncle about it in the morning, they both suggested that we had too much sugar and it had nightmares. Gee, thanks for being so understanding, family. Glad to know I could always rely on them to take us seriously. Fast forward about two years later, and they sold that house and moved south, down to northern Texas. The house they got there was much nicer and, well, me and my sister never had to deal with that again. My wife and I were driving along a lonely country road in southwestern Michigan. It was late fall and cold, near freezing actually. Not a soul was in sight, and the road was deserted. The road was also a two-lane highway curving in and out through the woods. The fields on either side of the highway were barren and brown, the grass being long and dead. We rounded a sharp bend in the road, and my wife suddenly exclaimed, Watch out! I look up from talking to her and saw this strange animal standing on the road ahead of us. It was tall and thin and was covered in shaggy brown fur. It turns and looks at us and we both saw it turn its head from side to side. I slam on the brakes and we both stared out the windshield in complete and total disbelief. This animal takes two giant steps towards the car and then bounded over the nearby barbed wire fence and disappeared into the field on the other side. This thing was huge. It must have been at least seven feet tall minimum and weighed at least 200 pounds. We were stunned. It was walking on two legs, but it was not a human, and it certainly was not a bear, 
although it looked like a dog, it was not a dog. So, in complete shock and probably out of my mind, as my wife would say, I immediately get out of the car and examine the fence where this creature had jumped over. The fence was almost six feet high, and the creature had cleared it without ever touching the top. I had not seen any arms, but it moved like a human, and it had been covered in thick brown hair. I was shocked. I was puzzled. we both seen it. I was sure of that. So I jumped back into the car and continued driving. We did not speak. We just stared ahead. I knew my wife had seen it. I knew the dogman had been real. I mean, I had seen it, but I did not believe it until I saw the fence. The creature had been very real, but what was it? The creature was the size of a man, but it wasn't a man. It was covered in weird mangy fur and kind of ran upright on two legs. That is what I remember most. Seeing a giant man-shaped creature covered with shaggy hair. The fur was matted and filthy, with parts of it looking like dead mangy skin. It seemed to be in some kind of distress. Might I add that, even though it was as tall as a man, it appeared a lot taller than a bear. It did not run like a bear either. It was not a coyote either. It was not a man, as I said again. I think this thing, the only thing it could have been was a dogman. I am really not all sure what to say about it. I do not know exactly what it was, but I can only guess. I can only assume that if the Michigan dogman is a real living creature, then my wife and I had seen it. I was driving up to my uncle's house to help him with some work that he had for me to do. So I take a shortcut through the woods, because it was quicker. I was driving up this country road, and I noticed that it was getting very foggy and hard to see, albeit it was early in the morning. I slowed down and I could barely see a thing. I was originally driving about 35 miles an hour and now I'm coming to a crawl and I see something cross the road in front of me. I thought it was a deer or something at first, but it was a little taller. I immediately began to slow down more and more to nearly a stop and I squint my eyes and look out in the fog, and what I was seeing was this huge dog. It was taller than any normal-sized dog and was running or moving on all fours. It was actually kind of moving fast, like it was coming after something. I then was getting scared because I was slowing down, almost to a stop, and this thing had come so close to my car. After it passed, I sped up, I didn't care how foggy it was. I just wanted to get away from this animal. It freaked me out. I know what you're probably thinking. It's just a dog. Why are you so scared? There's just something about it. It looked so wrong. After I saw it, it just did something to me. It instilled fear into me. I've never had an animal do that before. And I've been nearly face to face with a cougar. Not even the same. So, I then drove to my uncle's house and told him what I had seen. He had lived in this area for his whole life and said that, yeah, what you saw was called the Dogman. They're all around here. So, I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, you should try and get a picture of it. I was like, no way. I'm too scared to go back. And I guess he was really unfazed by me telling him about my account. I mean, he's so lax about it. His whole thing was just like, oh yeah, they come around my property all the time. I've seen so many of them. Just try not to bother them and they won't bother you. So, I've gone up to his place a few more times, but I never did see the dogman again after that. But, I've heard stories about it. In fact, I have heard that people have seen it walking in the middle of the road. It isn't afraid of cars and I guess we'll just stand there. People I know have swerved to miss it, and it'll just run into the woods. Crazy, I know. I've always been open to the idea of monsters and aliens, but I always thought they were just that. Just ideas. But after seeing the dogmen, I don't know what to think anymore. 
I mean, was it really a dogman? Was it just my mind playing tricks on me in the fog, or was this real? The most important thing to take away from my story is that you just have to accept that these things are real. I mean, I saw it with my own eyes, and even though I'm questioning myself because it defies my reality, or should I say my understanding of reality, but I have to accept it is not a myth. It is not a hoax. It is real, and it is unfazed by man. It is a living, breathing creature. I have been a lifelong hunter and a student of the outdoors for a very long time. And I don't know if you know this, but the outdoors has so much it could teach you. My love for the woods and animals that inhabit it are second to none. The day that I saw a dogman is one I'll never forget. I was in my early 20s and had only been hunting for a couple of hours in a woodlot about a mile or so away from my home. I was alone and had been wandering around. I had not seen any deer this morning, but was having a good time, just being out in the woods. It was, after all, like my second home. I had come to a place where there was a large split and a huge old cedar tree. I stopped a moment to look around and admire the view, when I then heard a noise that sounded like a gargling sound. I stopped to listen and noticed it was getting louder. I was just about to leave when I caught a glimpse of a dog in the distance. I was able to see it moving through the trees in a crouched position. It moved slowly and cautiously. I watched it for a couple of minutes and it never looked up. It looked brown and its hair was a little long. It was not the dog I had seen in my yard though, but it looked about the same. It moved from one tree to the next and it was still looking down. It was as if it was trying to sneak up on something. I watched it for a few more moments when it came to a small clearing. It stopped, and I could see it very well now. It was a dark brown and had a very large dog head. Its body, though, was a little smaller and on the skinny side. I noticed that it had a long snout and very long, pointy ears. The ears, though, were not like a dog's. They were more reminiscent of that of a fox's, and they were huge. I noticed that this was also much larger than any fox, but smaller than a coyote's. The entirety of this dog creature, though, looked like a mix of a large upright dog and a fox, if I had to describe it more accurately. I watched it for a few more moments, and then it looked up. I was only about a hundred or so yards away, and I could see it had huge teeth. Its mouth was amazingly large. It had a very wide jaw, and it was drooling. I was about to leave, and it started to run. I was shocked. I thought it was a bear at first, for the first few seconds, but as I noticed it more and more, I realized this was indeed a wolf creature of some kind. After it ran, I ran back to my house, from where I had walked now, I was about a mile away from my house. When I got home, I told my parents what I'd saw and they told me that it was probably just a coyote. I told them though that it was not a coyote. It was larger, and I have never seen one quite look like that. My mother told me to stop imagining things. I just went inside and tried to forget about it. I was outside the next day and I saw it again. It was on the other side of the creek that runs through our property. I was on the other side of the creek, and now it was out in the middle. It was looking down and slowly moving toward me. I was in a small stand of cedars, and there was a fallen tree between us. I did not want to shoot my gun and scare it, so I just watched it. I tried to get closer, but it ran off again. I watched it for a couple of minutes before it was gone, and I have never seen this thing again. I still think about it to this day. I have never seen anything like it. I have seen a few coyotes here and there in the past 20 years, but none that looks like this. I have never told anybody about this. At least, until now. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm afraid of being laughed at or ridiculed. I'm still a hunter, and I'm still in the woods all the time. I just try and not go out alone as much anymore. 
I have to remember that this was also back when I was kind of going through an addiction phase in my early 20s, where I didn't have a job, didn't have any money, so I was laid up with my parents till I was about 23, 24, and actually started a much more successful career. I can move out and move away, far away from those woods, to a patch of woods that I can call my own, where I don't have to see or deal with these things. I was born and raised here in Michigan, the Great Lakes State, as some of us like to call it. Early on in my childhood, I was raised in a large family that was close to the woods. We grew up learning the essentials, the importance of nature, and how to survive in it, something I think many people these days are desperately lacking. We were taught how to track, hunt, fish, and live off the land, basically. Taught how to respect nature and not to abuse it. As a child, I was always very interested. I loved nothing more than to go out into the woods and walk for miles on end, just to see what I could discover. I found this to be the most relaxing and peaceful feeling in the world. I was about 11 years old at the time. It was a beautiful summer day and my family and I had just returned from a fishing trip. It was warm, sunny, clear, great weather, and I was absolutely exhausted from fishing. All I wanted to do was to go home and take a nap. As my family and I were traveling home, we took a small road that was surrounded by woods. We would take this road every time we went home. It was a very shortcut that saved us about five minutes of driving time. I know, some shortcut, right? As we're traveling down this road, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. So I looked over to my right and, standing, about 15 yards off the side of the road was an animal that was very clearly standing upright. It was a large black creature, and it had a long snout like a dog, but it was also much broader than that of a dog's. It had very large shoulders and a very muscular build. It reminded me of somebody who heavily worked out. This thing was standing on two legs and was staring right at us. My family and I were all very startled and confused by this animal. My father slams on the brakes, causing the car to spin out of control and come to a stop. He then puts the car in reverse and backed up. When he did this, the animal quickly ran away into the woods. As my father backed the car up, I watched the animal run into the woods. I then turned my attention and I saw another creature standing next to a tree. It had the same build and physique as the first animal, and it was watching us very closely. When my father backed up the car, this creature quickly ran into the woods. So my family and I sat there for a few minutes, trying to figure out what we had just saw. We didn't know what to think of it. This was the first time I had ever seen anything like this. I had heard my family and others talk about the Michigan Dogman and what it was. I would always thought, though, that it was nothing more than a myth. A scary story told by parents to keep kids from wandering off. But now I know it is very real. I have had many sightings of this creature, though, since this first. I have seen it on multiple occasions, and it's always the same one, I think. Very tall and very muscular. It also had a very long snout and a long tail. It was mostly black in color, but sometimes appeared to have some gray on it. This is a very fast and very strong animal. I have seen this thing even chase and catch deer. I have seen it catch and kill wolves in front of my eyes, and I have seen it run after cars. This is not some animal that you want to provoke. It appeared very aggressive and will not hesitate to attack anyone. Now, I fear for my life whenever I see it. I know that one day, it will probably try and give chase and try to kill me. I've seen it attack and kill dogs and pigs. I know, one day, that's going to be a human. I've tried to now warn people about this creature, but not many believe. I've even shown some pictures online. I don't know what else to do. I've told my story, though, to many not many believe. Nobody ever will. 
Now, I live in constant fear of this creature, and I know that it will one day kill a human being, if given the chance. I will have to live with this fear for the rest of my life. That's my story, and I know what I saw, and I won't forget this. In the summer of 1988, I had a summer job at a gas station in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I was 18, and I was the only one working most of the time. It was located in the middle of the woods, and the station was off the road. It was only about an hour south of the town Vanderbilt. The area was very rural. The owners of the gas station were an elderly couple. The husband was named Bob, and the wife was named Rose. On August 30th, 1988, I was working at the gas station alone. It was in the evening time, and it was also very hot and humid. I was sweeping off the front porch of the station when I heard a strange howling noise in the woods nearby. Now, it was right around 7 p.m. I first thought it was coyotes, but it wasn't like any coyote howl that I had ever heard. So, I walked around the gas station and to the back of it, and I kind of peered off into the woods to see if I could see anything. That's when I saw some strange movement through the woods. Whatever it was, was moving very quickly, and making these bizarre noises, these deep noises. It was darting in between the trees and bushes in the darkness. So, I ran back into the gas station, grabbed the owner's twenty-two rifle, quickly loading it, running back outside. I stood on the porch and tried to see if the thing was still there. It was. I aimed my twenty-two right at it and took a shot. I didn't know if I hit it or not, but the thing began to run away. I think it was running on all fours. It was very fast and it was moving through the trees and bushes at an incredible speed. So I chased after it. It was running through the woods and it was heading south. I fired another shot. Now it was moving even faster, and I was struggling to keep up. I don't know what this thing was, but I just wanted to kill it. Now I was on a hillside, and in the bottom of a valley. I couldn't see it anymore, so I tried to follow the trail that it left behind in the grass, but I lost it. I went back to the gas station, and I called the police. I told them that I had shot at a large wild animal that I thought looked like a dog, but wasn't. So I tell the police that it was very fast, and I thought it could have been a dog, but wasn't sure. I didn't tell them that I wasn't sure, though. The police came to the gas station. They drove around the area looking for the thing. I told them it might be trouble, though, which is why I tried to shoot at it. And they didn't shoot at it because they didn't see it or find anything. I don't even think they really ever found out about the incident, and I never heard anything else about it. I've never heard any reports of any strange animals being killed or any carcasses being found. I'm not exactly sure. I was working at the gas station for about another week or so. I didn't see anything else like that again. I didn't tell anyone else about it. Time goes on and I tell my wife about it years later when I'm married and a few of my friends, but I've never told anybody else. I didn't want to be called a liar or a fool or crazy. I have always been very reluctant to tell my story, but now that it's been a while, I don't care. Make fun of me. Laugh at me. My friends know. My family knows. They all know what I saw. I want people to know that I'm not crazy, and I have not been lying to everybody about this. I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I can tell you that this was not a dog that you would see. It was like any animal that you couldn't even imagine. I would like to see this animal killed or captured. I don't know if it was an animal that is still unknown to science or maybe a legendary creature. Maybe it's dead now, who knows. But you might be asking me something. Why did I just feel this innate feeling to try and shoot at it and kill it? Well, to tell you the truth, based on what I saw, it was terrifying looking. And give it the chance to, I think it would have torn me limb from limb. And I think being an 18-year-old dumb kid, I just felt the feeling of fear and was like, you know what? I better kill this thing before it kills me.